Um, now, if you were expecting a, a travel video with lots of pretty pictures in this one, you're going to be disappointed. This little video is just purely about the money that we've spent in the last four weeks. So if you don't want to hear that, you might want to switch off now. But if you are interested, you might be keen to know that we have spent a grand total of 1,300 euros in the last four weeks. So we arrived in Dunkirk four weeks ago, almost to the hour. And at the moment we're in the hills above Nice and tomorrow we head into Italy. So 1,300 euros and we'll talk about how we broke or how, we, how those numbers break down. So we're well under budget which is pretty good. So if you haven't seen our other video, our budget for this trip has been a thousand New Zealand dollars a week. So $500 each basically. Um, we're not 20 years old anymore. We don't feel the need to travel on a $20 a day budget. So we worked out a budget that we thought would give us sort of a level of comfort that suited us and allowed us to do a few extra bits and pieces. Now, it's fair to say that the biggest part of our budget has been food. Mm. Yes, including cheese. Yes. So we spent 470 euros over the last four weeks on food. 470. And I guess, it's like anyone anywhere, you've got choices. You can go to restaurants every day or you can eat, eat beans and rice. But we found our happy medium. The supermarkets are fantastic. Um, I think we've eaten pretty, pretty well. Um, plenty of plenty of sort of takeaway food and um, I think we had one decent meal out. One day, yeah. Um, we find in the motorhome that depending on where you're parked too, it's often easier to actually eat in the van rather than to go and try and find a restaurant because often with the ears you're not that close to the centre of town. Um, and I don't know, I think we just quite like cooking really. And the food here in France is definitely a bit more expensive than the food in the UK, but we just kind of... I was going to say we eat less, but I don't know that we do. No, we eat a, way too much bread, unfortunately. We've got a whole new category. It's called croissants. Yeah. And, um, mm. But the bread thing has been interesting here because, you know, you can buy it in the boulangerie, which we've done. You can buy it in the supermarkets. Um, and they price it not just on loaf, but also on weight at times. So, yeah, the bread thing has been quite an interesting yeah. one to watch. So, remember that number, 470 euro. That's just a bit over a third of our budget. And we haven't gone hungry. The second, I guess, most important part of our budget was fuel. Um, and nearly all of that is diesel, probably 95% mm. of that is diesel. So we've spent 280 euro on diesel. That's 70 euros a week. It's pretty easy. And a bit on LPG. And a little bit on LPG. Yeah. The we gas, though, is um, lasting a long time now. Now that it's not winter, or bitterly cold winter, we only use the gas now for cooking and for for the fridge running when we're not on electric, so yeah, gas is really cheap now. Yeah, so we filled up two weeks ago, and we're still on the first bottle, mm. so it's almost a non-issue now. So mm. diesel, money well spent, for the places it's taken us, no buses, no trains, just go to these back and beyond villages, mm. really good value. The other thing that we have spent more money on here than we did in the UK has been on entrance fees, so that's been 340 euros. Yep. Um, a lot of that went on Paris. We made the decision before we left that when we went to Paris we were going to try and see all the things that we wanted to see within reason and we tossed up between getting a Paris pass or getting a museum pass and in the end we went for the museum pass which was quite a bit cheaper. The Paris pass is 130 euros for three days and we got a four day museum pass for 62 euros each. Mm. Yeah, so we saved quite a bit of money. On top of that though we did buy a metro pass as well for about 27 euros. The Paris pass, the 130 euros for three days, gives you everything that we got on the other two passes, plus you could do a wine tour and you could go for a cruise on the Seine and a few other things, but we, looking at it, figured we couldn't fit it all in in three days, whereas the museum pass gave us all the museums we wanted to go to, plus Versailles. Um, it really would have been really, really cost effective had Versailles been open the day that we went there, but there was a strike so we missed out on that. But it did allow us to see all the museums we wanted. But along the way, when we visited chateaus, cathedrals, mm. there's this money just chips away. So, yeah, a big part of our budget. And if we weren't being tourists, I guess you wouldn't have that part of it, but mm. we certainly are tourists. Yeah, and because we don't know if we'll come back to this part of the world again, we weren't going to miss out on seeing the odd chateau and, and the museums and art galleries. Mm. Mm. Now, the next category, 
our um, accommodation if you like we spent a hundred and seventy euro on campgrounds and ears so out of the 28 days we spent six nights in fully fledged um, campgrounds but that was mainly in Paris mm. and Avignon uh, and then we spent I think another five nights in ears where we had to pay a little bit for electricity maybe five euros a night six euros a night that kind of thing but the rest of it were f either free ears or free camping out in the wild and I gotta mm. say in France it's very very welcoming it's so easy you could actually come to france and not pay anything at all for accommodation if you wanted because there are so many free ears um, you do have to pay extra in some of them for electricity and water but the electricity thing you could be fully self-contained if you wanted when it comes to but electricity because we've got a solar panel that mm. keeps things charged up mm. our only real need for electricity is charging up the laptop yeah and if we could be bothered to buy an inverter we mm, probably solve that problem, that but, problem. Uh, mm. it's quite nice to go and have a luxurious shower every four days and just in the not, campsites, in the campsite yeah. and do your washing and yeah. um, just that's just like a little holiday for us really yeah we do we do need the electricity because of the laptop as Neil said we've got quite a few electronic devices actually which is quite surprising because we're not particularly technically minded but most of our stuff charges off USB so we have got this 12 volt adapter that we put into the dash of the van and it has two USB points in it and the van itself has another two USB points too so while we're driving um, we have the TomTom -tom plugged into this I can charge my phone, a camera, we can charge the iPad and we actually do have a separate little power pack as well that we charge up so if we need to charge anything else um, we've got another two slots on the power pack as well for USB things but it is the laptop that requires a plug um, and because of the blogs and the um, videos, we can't do without the laptop. Mm. Which mm. brings us to the fifth category, and that is internet. the internet. And we spent a total of 40 euros for the last four weeks. 10 euros a week. Mm. It seems like good value to me. Yeah. The internet thing, it's we've never had to worry about internet on holidays before because normally when we travel, I think a month is the longest we've been away in one hit. And... Usually we're staying in hotels or um, guest houses and they always have free Wi-Fi, which is, which is enough. But this trip, because we've had to work out where we're going to go, how we're going to get there, and also for uploading movies and things and keeping our website up to date, the internet has been something we've had to seriously think about. In the UK, for the first when we were there for five weeks, we bought a SIM card from uh, 3, which cost, I think it was £20, 20 pounds. for 12 gigs. And between that and finding free Wi-Fi, that lasted us for the five weeks. And then we were going to use them again for Europe, but we went into three, three, three shops and they all said that you couldn't tether devices using their SIM cards. So my phone is what connects us mm. and all our devices together. So we had to have an option whereby my phone could be a hotspot to hook up our laptop and our iPad. So we ended up going with EE and we are currently paying £30 for 16 gigs of data so it's a 30 day plan but you can renew your data early but we also rely on finding free Wi-Fi so for example when we were in Bruges we were just sitting so, in the square watching what was going on Neil realized that there was free Wi-Fi from the museum so while we were watching what was going on we uploaded a movie at the same time using their Wi-Fi yeah. so there is free Wi-Fi out there as well so just to go over those numbers again, and this is the, the boring number crunching stuff. So we spent a grand total of 1,300 euro. That breaks down to 325 euro a week, or 43 euro a day as a couple, or 22 euro per person per day, which is about 37 New Zealand dollars per person per day, or 19 pounds per person per day. So again, it's definitely doable. Yeah, we were we were uh, budgeting for way more than that, mm. but I don't think that we're shortchanged. We we keep warm. No, we've seen, seen we've seen everything we want to see. We've certainly eaten well. Yep. Does this mean now that I've got more money for gelato and cheese maybe <sighs> Italy? Because uh, no. I think <laughs> I think that should be it. Cut the movie now. <laughs> no, no, we're about to have a domestic. Sorry, this is all over. <laughs> <laughs>